Welcome back to pattern recognition. So you've seen that we discussed the linear discriminant analysis and also associated classification. And today we want to look into a couple of applications of this technique. And we want to show you that this is not just something that you find in textbooks, but this is actually being used in several different variants. So here you see the Adidas one, and this is a digital revolution in sports. So this is actually work that has been done by a colleague of mine, Bjorn Escofia, and they significantly contributed to the development of this intelligent shoe. So this was for the first time ever a shoe that actually had embedded sensing and the sole of the shoe was constructed in a way that it had a sensing and a motor element so the shoe could adjust the stiffness of the sole. So uh, this is very interesting because if you are running cross country then sometimes you're on hard soil and in these cases you want your shoe sole to be very soft but on other cases you're running on very soft soil and in these cases a hard shoe sole can actually prevent injury. So an intelligent shoe that would then adjust to the floor, to the soil, to the terrain that you're running on is a very good idea in order to prevent any kinds of injury during sports. So this shoe was actually made into a product by Adidas and you could actually buy it in the stores and the sensing and recognition system has been developed at our lab. So what is the overview? Well, you had this uh, cushioning element that is indicated by 01 here, which has a magnetic system for compression measurement. Then you had a microcontroller and a user interface that are essentially buttons on the shoe. And this had a clock frequency of 24 megahertz and you only had eight kilobytes of program memory. And then there was a motor for adapting the cushion using a cable system. So you see the challenge here is that you can compute only very little in a shoe. So this embedded system really needs fast processing and simple methods in order to perform the classification. And this is exactly where our ideas with feature transforms now come in. So you can only do a couple of very simple features on the shoe and they have to be calculated in real time then the classification itself also has to be very efficient because you have these strong memory and compute limitations and therefore the LDA classifier can really help us here. And the nice thing with the LDA classifier is that it essentially maps this two class problem into a linear decision boundary. And therefore we can approximate this two class problem now with a polynomial of order one. And we simply have to introduce weights alpha i and features xi in order to compute that. So the actual decision then is performed as the sign of the projection onto this class boundary with the respective bias and then you decide whether you're on the one side of the plane or the other side of this high dimensional hyperplane. With respect to features, there are 19 features that have been computed in this shoe for the classification and then in the end only three features have been selected for implementation and the idea of these feature computations are essentially an analysis of the step signal and the change of the cushioning material. So you need to essentially detect when a step is performed and you can then derive from the amount of the change of the cushioning element how hard the actual impact on the surface is and you can also see on the steepness how the material that you're running on or the entire system is reacting and from this you can then control the stiffness of your shoe. 
So we can also visualize this in a three-dimensional space because we have three features. And here you can see the hard and the soft surface classes. And you see that they form here approximately Gaussian classes and we can very nicely apply our theory now. So we get the decision boundary and then we simply decide we are on one side or the other side of the decision boundary here in this case. So very nice application of the LDA classifier in practice in an embedded system with very tough compute constraints. Another idea that I want to show you here in this context is shape modeling. And here the idea is that we sample surface points of a shape. So this is a 3D shape. And in particular, we are interested here in the modeling of anatomical structures such as organs, the liver, kidneys, lungs, and so on. And we can sample them as surface points. So we take a fixed number of points for every shape. And these are typically three-dimensional points. And we have a total of n points. And then we can encode the surface, given that we have the correct ordering of the points, into a single vector. So we write this up as a high-dimensional vector that is then containing all of the elements of the 3D points. And this is then living in a space that has the dimension of 3 times n, where n is the number of points. So this is really a very high-dimensional space. Now, this is difficult for modeling, and we want to be able to model the degrees of shape changes according to anatomy in different patients. Now, the idea that we have is that we have some M shapes, and this means that we have M shape vectors that give us this landmark configuration. So here our vector x each has the dimension of 3 times n, and we have a total of m observations. And this then allows us to compute a PCA of L and get the spectral decomposition of the associated covariance matrix. So here you can see that we essentially get the eigenvectors and associated eigenvalues. And if we sum them up, they would give again the respective covariance matrix. So this is essentially computed by using the principal component analysis here. Now, if we have that, then we can actually model all of our shapes with some x star that is essentially giving us the shape configuration. And the shape configuration can then be expressed as a linear combination of the eigenvectors. So we take the mean shape that is x bar and x bar is added on top the number of chosen dimensions. So let's say we have the top three or top five modes of variation because they already explain, let's say 95% of the variance in the shape variations. And then we can use those, let's say, five dimensions in order to express the most significant changes in shape of these meshes. So then we essentially end up with only five numbers that describe us how the shape looks like. So this is pretty cool. And it also allows us to model different shapes. So here we have, let's say, a kidney. And this kidney has different shapes in different patients. And we use this then called active shape model then in order to generate the segmentation. And the nice thing is now that we only have to estimate essentially the rotation and translation with respect to the respective organ and the centroid in the volume. And then the shape can be described by very few parameters, as we've seen on the previous slide. So here you essentially see the shape variations over the first two eigenvectors. On the left-hand side, you see the shape variations over the first eigenvector dimension. On the right-hand side, the variation over the second eigenvector. So we can now use that and estimate rotation translation and those shape parameters. And here you see the fitting process over iteration. So we start with the mean shape that is here fitted into the kidney. And you see essentially a slice through the body. And we are indicating also a slice through the mesh in purple. And over the iterations on the top right, 
bottom left, bottom right, you can see how the change in shape parameters allows us to approximate the observed shape in the CT volume much better. And then this yields a complete 3D segmentation of the kidney. So this is a very popular method if you want to break down the complexity of shapes into a couple of dimensions and it allows you also then to sample plausible shape configurations from this shape model. So PCA here is a very useful tool to describe the complex variations of anatomical changes in the body. If you got interested in this topic, please attend our lectures on medical image processing because there we go into all of the details of the method, how the active shape modeling search algorithm is actually performed, which transforms you have to perform on the image in order to make it work and so on. So I can really recommend looking into these classes as well. This already brings us to the end of this video. So next time in pattern recognition, we want to talk a little bit more about general the problem of regression and how regression can be regularized, because this is a very important concept that we will also need in the next couple of videos. So thank you very much for listening and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.